overlord the one who stayed. Volume 4, Chapter 3 Written by Robert Butler Writer The Lizardmen did not yet have someone permanently appointed to them beyond the occasional visit by Shalter. Demiage occasionally visited once or twice to provide them proper supplies, but a more permanent fixture would be necessary at some point. Another thing to rectify, but not urgent. The lizard men themselves seemed quite patient about it, content to use the paper provided with lists of supplies used, held, requested, and always sending along words of gratitude for the shipments of food that was supplied to them. Ains thought that it might have been because of the lack of oppression, that their growing reverence and response to him suddenly emerging through the use of the gate spell was so uniform. They all at once knelt on sight and shouted for their chiefs. Zariusu, Krush, Shasuryu, Sukyu, and Kyuku emerged from a single building as soon as Ain's name was announced. The many villagers had already prostrated themselves, forcing the chiefs to weave rapidly between their people to make it to the front. Once there, they lowered themselves immediately, kneeling in submission. Krush, at a glance, seemed larger than he recalled. They're eating better. Then all Ains wanted to do was slap himself, she was obviously with child though not very far along. Great one, how may we be of service to you? Zariusu asked, as he was in the middle, and slightly forward in line compared to the rest of them, it seemed they had come to defer in his direction for leadership. Ains tried not to look too much around at the village, it still wasn't an impressive place. However, it was noteworthy that the stakes were taken up, that there were far more homes, the walls were expanded, and it appeared that there was the faint smell in the air from a smith's forge. Most especially he noticed the beginnings of a statue, a statue of himself. Where did they even find a rock that big? It was upright, and the beginnings of outstretched arms were evident. At a guess it was roughly a tenth of the way finished. Ains chose to be brief, I intend to visit the dwarfs and wish to know if anyone here has been to their kingdom who can act as a guide. Zariusu bowed his head, forgive your servant, my lord, but I killed the one who knew the way, please, forgive me, but my travels took me among human lands, I know of only one traveller who ventured there, and he is gone. Crush immediately began to grovel at Ain's feet, please. My lord, my husband is going to be a father, it was a duel with Zenbaru, one Zenbaru himself began. The death was not planned, nor intended to defy any future will of yours. He acted in ignorance, please grant clemency to your faithful servant and his family. Ains paused, briefly dumbfounded, I will have to ask Demiage just what he said to create this terrifying impression in their minds. Have no fear, what is done in ignorance may sting as much as malice, but it still isn't the same. I am a just lord. Ains proclaimed and gave a noble wave over their heads in imitation of Queen Draudelin. As to Zenbaru's death, was he strong? Ains asked. Very, my lord. Very. Zariusu said and reached over to help his wife rise to one knee again, she still shook with fear but was at least quiet. Then he may survive his resurrection, do you have his body? Ains asked. Yes. My lord, we had it retrieved and kept it preserved, intending to bury it properly on his own ground again when we expanded that way again in a few years. Zariusu's words flowed like water, smoothly, and without fear after taking aim to words of just lordship, as divine proclamation and absolute truth. Good, have it brought out here. But before that, congratulations on the pending birth of your child, when they are born, send word of their birth. We have a custom among my people of giving gifts to mark the occasion of someone's arrival in the world. I would like to provide something suitable for such a momentous occasion. Ain said, it was more off-handed, intended to ease the tension, but from the gasps among the lizard men which followed he could only conclude that he enacted a new tradition. There are worse things than giving them a new pleasant tradition I suppose. Ains thought with a mental shrug. I, yes, of course, my lord, what other things do you do? Zariusu asked, and Ains looked away as memory took him from the present again. My friends and I, we would throw parties, those who were dearest to us would come, give their gifts, sing songs, and play games. No matter how far apart we were, those were times of great celebration for us. 
birthdays were not just that a person was born, but rather that we were happy they were in our lives. And of course, there was cake, and ice cream. Ains shook his head when he caught their lost expressions. Types of food, think nothing of it. I have things I must do, but, it was good to remember those times. Ain said with a tender reverence, cradling the memory as if it were a newborn babe. Yes, forgive my needless diversion, my lord. We will bring his body immediately. Zariusu promised, and the chiefs rose together, the whole rest of the tribe remained prostrated around him. Silence, long and uncomfortable, took over the area until what must have been mere moments later passed and the chiefs emerged carrying the wrapped body of what must have been, in life, a truly impressive figure. The lizard men in the way scooted to the side to allow the chiefs to pass, two abreast with crush at the center rear. They held Zenbru's body overhead until they came close to Ains and laid the body of the fallen at the feet of their god to await his miracle. Ains held the wand out, and within the sheer cloth, a sudden intake of breath could be heard, like a person who was drowning and out of air just shattered the surface of the water and inhaled all he could at once. Zenbaru's eyes opened wide to find himself staring through the cloth up at a red and white mask. I'm... I'm alive? He asked, his eyes darted around. Is this the Ever Lake? Did we all die, did the frogman kill everyone? Are you... God? He asked, though he fumbled a few words, the confusion was clear. That depends on who you ask, Zenbaru, but you are not dead. The lizard men were triumphant, Hecate and the frogmen were destroyed and have been relocated far, far away from here and will not trouble your people again. The lake belongs to the lizard men now, and the monsters that plague the swamps have been hunted down to the last. Ains explained the impossible while Crush Lulu bent over him and ran her finger claw over the cloth and tore it asunder. Zenbaru emerged as it parted, coming out as if he were a butterfly from a cocoon. Then it is heaven. He said with reverence. I he stopped when he caught sight of Zariusu. You killed me. Zenbaru said with a long, quiet stare. Zariusu inclined his head. I did. Tension rose several notches. You fight good. Zenbaru praised his victorious rival. You protected my tribe? We bled together and won, thanks to his majesty, our king. Zariusu's reply was clear-eyed and he did not turn away from the look Zenbaru gave him. Good. Then the strongest rule as they should, and I am happy. Zenbaru said and turned to kneel before the masked Danes. Then you are my king too, if you will have me. Zenbaru said without reservation. You're taking all this very well. Ains remarked, looking half dumbfounded behind his mask at the ease with which the lizard man seemed to adapt. If I am not dead and we're all alive, we must have one. If they credit you, then you must be strong, and I follow the strong. What I don't know, I will find out later. Zenbaru said it very matter of factly and it was hard to doubt him. Maybe something about the simplicity of just follow the strong makes it easier to accept sudden changes. It was something for Ains to think about at a later time, instead in the present, he got to the point. You have been to the Dwarven Kingdom, haven't you? Ains asked. When I was a traveller, yes, my king. Zenbaru answered. They were very good to me, allowing me to stay with them when the temperatures grew too cold and they guided me through safe paths away from the mountain when I left. So the dwarfs of this world are clearly more altruistic than those in the game, that is good to know. Ains pondered that and filed it away for later recall. You will act as a guide and take me to them, I wish to open diplomatic and trade ties to my northern neighbours. Ains gave the order, and Zenbaru swayed a little. Forgive me, my body. I still feel weak, but at your command I, Zenbaru stopped when Ains laid a hand on his shoulder. Rest for this day, I will retrieve you tomorrow and we will go then. There is a great deal of news for you to catch up on, and I'm sure your people would like to celebrate your return to life. Ains replied to Zenbaru, who lowered his head deeply. My lord is generous. Zenbaru mumbled. What other lord deserves their title? Ains asked, and when he was gone, a throng of cheers in his name followed, 
and the lizard men began to throw an impromptu feast for Zenbaru's birthday.